To give you context, I was like playing a hundred concerts a year before the pandemic and then suddenly going to like zero. And, and I was asking myself a lot of questions, right? Like why do things have to be a certain way in the industry? A lot of things that had bothered me a little bit before, but I didn't really have the time or the mental space to think about. I could try and create positive impact coming from myself, right? But what if it could be a community of, you know, people who could inspire each other, who could do, who could create that positive impact and, and, and support each other and give each other feedback. That was an idea that I had at the time. You know, I, I mean, bring it back to when I was a kid, when I first started learning the violin and I remember just sitting on the floor of my teacher's house and we were just all playing for each other, you know, listening to each other, what we had been working on throughout the week. I realized that I'd been looking for that feeling. It was a magical feeling. Why does this feeling come so few and far in between. And it was during, during this time, I, I was lucky to meet a lot of inspiring people. When I was uh, picked up my stuff and moved to Taipei for a bit, I, I met a lot of cool people who had experience in building communities. People like the co-founder of YouTube, for example. It was really cool to hear them talk about building community of connecting people. As I was getting more and more inspired by all these things, uh, especially around community, I realized, well, hey, wait a second. Like I'm learning all about communities, right? And then I realized, well, hang on a second, I, I, I have a community too. Let's say, hey. <laughs> and, and that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today as well. That's what I've been working on for the past two years is why I've been like, you know, really getting my butt kicked. And, and oh, it's important to have something like this. There's a need for this, right? I compare it to like when you study with, with others. So, so Tonic is that place where you can practice and grow and motivate each other together. For many of us who, picked up an instrument, who decided, you know, we wanted to be a musician in the first place without being able to share. It is like watching a movie halfway. Let me get into showing you the app. All right, so one second here. I've got a top camera. You can see this, ta-da. So studios are our primary feature. So I'm gonna just start with that. Um, it's basically kind of like your avatar, you're in your, in your practice space combined. It is, it is where the magic happens. I know, that it can be daunting to play in front of people. It's also what's so rewarding. You can search for a piece. This is your playlist. This is what other people will see when they step inside your studio. So it could be a composer. It could be also a technique. So it could be like, you know, if you type in left hand, oh, dexterity and speed, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give a little demo of uh, what the studio sound is like. Let it be known. This is just a work in progress. This is not the final, final finished uh, uh, version. So you could be practicing Bach. This is just the beginning. I mean, you see a stage right now, pretty soon it's gonna become a room as you grow and you progress through tonic. Oh, you'll notice that here you've unlocked a t-shirt. Yes, we'll get into this later, but uh, this is something that your avatar can wear. So now we've unlocked a tonic t-shirt. This is so cute. We're gonna try this on. Oh my gosh, I just, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Look at that. We have streaks, this dashboard is here and the dashboard is really great for those who like to hold themselves accountable, right? You can also set a weekly goal as well. Oh yeah, you can see your achievements here as well. And you can see these lovely, beautiful badges here. I used to love Pokemon as a kid. <laughs> and I would like collect all the badges and like all the gym leaders. Those were fun times. So, you know, there's a little bit of that here as well. For example, this one is for hundred days of practicing. You'll also notice that there's challenges. Challenges are a great way to join in on the fun with everyone. We got the Henley challenge going on right now. Henley Publishing has uh, kindly sponsored part of this challenge where we're trying to reach an accumulative goal of 2,023 hours. We're celebrating Henley's 75th anniversary along with the new year. We've blown past that goal here. I have, I have uh, contributed an hour and seven minutes. You're welcome. <laughs> I swear I practice more than this. Anyway, uh, continuing on, you'll see that like, you know, people can uh, reply to threads here. Uh, there are motivational messages that come on. And we've also got a leaderboard. We have groups as well. And groups are a great way, by the way, to keep in touch with each other. You might wanna join the goals and motivation group to meet people uh, who can share tips and, and tricks. And you can also send uh, photos and stuff like that. Of course, there's a two set group. Guys, what are you guys talking about in here? Oh, you were talking about Ray Chen. Oh my gosh, wow. The two set group talks about Ray Chen, really? 
That's so cool. That's a brief tour of Tonic. Oh yes, we are welcoming a special, special guest. Jasmine Choi. How are you doing? Great, 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 great. I've been enjoying your introduction and, and seeing the Tonic app and I practiced today and yesterday and met a lot of wonderful friends, musical friends and Tonic app. So I had to thank you for this wonderful classical music community, just like back in the college days, but cooler, I think. <laughs> that, that actually, hearing you say that makes me so happy because um, there is definitely this mm -hmm. aspect of kind of like a summer camp, right? Like a, like a yeah, music Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also when I see all the other people practicing, mm -hmm. it's like college days going through the hallway of the practice rooms and you know, get motivated just by listening to so many people actually practicing. I get to be actually self-conscious. So it's a good practice for me that I feel like it's a practice, but a little bit like a concert, you know? When you first told me about this tonic app, I was really scared that, oh my God, <laughs> I have to practice in front of everybody, even though they don't see me in person. When people are commenting, I mean, I don't have to look at the comments all the time, but then when I want to take a break, for example, today I wanted to make a little bit of a chocolate break and then it turned into a chocolate talk. <laughs> And in this 5-10 minutes, it was really refreshing. And then when you go back to practicing again, uh, after this session, this break, I could feel more familiar with the people and then, you know, I felt more relaxed. During your introduction, you mentioned that, you know, the classical music was a little bit secretive and a little bit personal. Mm -hmm. uh, especially the practicing part. All the in-between, you know, the very first day you start out the piece and mm -hmm. then the very final day when you play the concert the whole middle part has been a big mystery to most of us and a lot of uh, non-classical musicians mm. and when i think of people learn an instrument as a hobby for example how would they know how to practice how would they know uh, how to get there you know but then mm. when i think of this tonic app conscious these practicing. people are going to come yeah. to Exactly. Right, 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 right. Come to I, the Tonic app and see exactly the same situation as you are. And then you talk with each other in the group. So how do you start with this chord, first chord, or for example, in the flute, how do you start out with this head joint? And then can you listen to me? And then you comment each other mm. and you can find all different levels of the instrument players. You know, right, the beginners right, right. can talk with each other and so on. In any case, I, I wanted to um, I wanted to try and make uh, your uh, to move on to the next part and make your make your avatar. I thought that we it would be fun to see a little bit of all the different uh, avatar options that we have. I'm going to choose. I love these avatars. Oh, Jasmine, have you? Oh, Jasmine, you kind of have like brownish hair. There you go. <laughs> Oh, there you go. That looks that looks that looks like a good like similar mm -hmm. starts. Oh, and then I should probably like choose the flute, right? So there we go. Boom. Mm -hmm. Choose the flute, the instrument, and then when we so open. So do studio, I actually have to earn uh, every clothes? Yeah, you practicing? gotta earn. You gotta earn your studio and earn mm -hmm. all the clothes. All you right. Can, you can keep practicing to unlock items, Ooh. themes, and more. All right. <laughs> I know people have some questions to ask, <laughs> so right. uh, I thought that it would be fun for people to have their first studio experience. All right, we exactly. have a few studios <laughs> going on right now. Hi, Jasmine. Um, I was wondering if you had any tips for like, well, not really an adult beginner, but somebody trying to get back into the flute. I took lessons as a middle schooler. Cool. I want to get back into it, but I don't really know where to start. I would say pick a piece that you would really love to work on. You would know which piece would be too easy or too difficult for you. I would pick a little bit difficult for you because mm. that's what uh, like a nice little challenge. Keep your interest going. Yeah, exactly. When it's too difficult, you know, you will lose interest very soon. And within the range of your favorite pieces. Oh, thank you, Jasmine, and thank you to Lauren as well uh, <laughs> for for your for your question. And hope that um, you know uh, your question. journey back yeah. into flute is gonna best of wishes, best of luck with for that. One more question, mm -hmm. and I'm looking here. Uh, mm -hmm. Looks like oh, Marin here. Let's join in. Hello. Hello. The question is, uh, I'm a composer. Uh, I'm curious to hear uh, your one tip for a composer regarding your instruments. Oh my gosh, that's a great question. Oh, one tip for a composer. Yeah, one I tip, see. yeah. Oh, I, I have an opinion. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 go. The number of the notes, they don't make it necessarily the greatest piece. So, in other words, don't try to put too many notes. Mm. There could be a really beautiful piece with just a simple line. That is <laughs> what do probably you think, the most insightful. <laughs> oh my gosh, that just like blew my mind. That is actually really good. Yeah, make every note count. I mean, they say that about us, like too, right? Make every note count. But like suddenly, for a composer, yeah, make every note count. If there was one tip that I would say for 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 composers, for for creators, is just that you should try to find your, I would say, your voice, and and try not to think about what you should do. You know, I, and I think that that's like one of the most important things of just growing up in general, like. And just becoming yourself. Um, and I think it's important to learn the rules, but then very quickly uh, learn how you want to bend them and learn how to uh, yeah. establish your own your own voice. I don't want to keep you too late, Jasmine, because I know that you have All a right. really really early. It's eleven p.m. Or train? Train, actually. Train. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it was great catching up with you yes. and all of you who are watching as well. Thanks for having me. Bye, Jasmine. Thank all you. Right. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to download Tonic today. Bye. <laughs>